It takes focus, dedication, talent, and years of work to become a professional, dancing on the great ballet stages of the world. And so it's a great pleasure tonight to welcome Harrison James, a principal dancer with the National Ballet of Canada. Welcome. Thank you. It's very nice to have you here. Um, so you started ballet when you were five, but before that you were dancing in the house anyway. Can you tell me how you got into it? Yeah, I think it's just something my mum noticed uh, whenever music was on in the house. It was I would react to it in a certain way. We had a dress-up box at home and I would always put on costumes and put on shows. Uh, so she just brought it up one day and asked me if I wanted to go to uh, dance classes. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know what I was getting into, um, but I, I loved it as a kid and I loved the structure um, mm -hmm. and just being with others who were also dancing and it just kind of went from there, yeah. And you're from New Zealand, so you went to the New Zealand School of Dance. Uh, at the time, were there many boys dancing ballet? Um, yeah, I mean, when I started and I was doing the syllabus, the Royal Academy of Dance syllabus in my hometown, there was about, there was two other boys, which was really rare. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I went to the New Zealand School of Dance, uh, there was probably, I think nine boys and 15 girls. So there was much more of a, more of a balance. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, did you experience any stigma dancing ballet as a young man? Uh, yeah, I did knew the typical stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I think people that didn't understand uh, what doing ballet entails uh, and how much power and um, that takes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also think, you know, in New Zealand, there's that um, real mentality of a man being this kind of butch guy drinking beer and watching and playing rugby and being on a farm and, you know, quite a, a rural country. Mm -hmm. um, so to be doing something that didn't fit that image was a bit of an issue to get past, but I never, I never really wanted to stop. Yeah. You never did. Um, was it because of the support of your parents or because you just loved it so much? Yeah, a little bit. Like I, my family was always behind me. They would come to any recitals or performances that I had. Um, and of course, my, my parents were behind me financially and mm -hmm. taking me to classes. Uh, so I never felt at home like there was any issue there. Yeah. Now, you, to go from, you know, playing dress up um, mm. to actually like you're a professional dancer mm. and what does it really take to commit to get to the level that you're at? Um, I think, it, well, it takes a lot of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. uh, I moved out of home when I was 15 uh, and went to the New Zealand School of Dance. And then two years later, I was across the Pacific Ocean in San Francisco finishing my training there. So I was, you know, 14 or 15 hour flight away from any of my family. Um, and that was a huge move and a huge decision. And um, what was it like? like? Yeah. Like, why did you have to leave? Uh, I think uh, I felt like coming to the States where there are more schools and more companies and generally you're closer to the world of ballet uh, because New Zealand is so far from anywhere mm -hmm. um, and the way my school director described it was being a big fish in a small pond so to speak so I, I got to go to the states and suddenly everyone was so much better than me and I had to work so hard just to kind of keep up and to improve and to get better and and like that's that's exactly what you need that kind of challenge yeah and so it worked out in the end um, I, I also get the sense that even for dancers in Canada, there's kind of like this need for them to leave Canada to go overseas. Mm. Is there maybe like more of a, do, do people take you more um, as a legitimate dancer when you leave and go somewhere else? Um, I think it's more of a taste of uh, finding the right company mm -hmm. uh, for you because every company around the world offers slightly different uh, things to their dancers and in, in terms of uh, the repertoire or in terms of the life you lead outside of the ballet. I think National Ballet, is, uh, National ballet of Canada is, is incredible in that it allows its dancers to have this passion and uh, to perform and to make a living out of dance and also have a life outside of the ballet as well. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many dancers in the company that have children, they have families. Uh, and passions 
outside of dance, mm -hmm. and I think it's wonderful that we have that here in Canada. So I, yeah, I'm certainly happy to be here. What's it like to wake up every morning and to realize that I get to do what I love every single day? Mm. I, I mean, I think about that sometimes, and that's, <laughs> and yeah, certainly when that thought crosses my mind, I, I feel uh, very lucky and very privileged to have, to have ended up where I have. Um, but luck doesn't really, I mean, maybe luck does play a little bit, but it's also because mm. you've worked really hard. Yeah, it's a bit of both. It's a bit of, um, yeah, a bit of lucky timing. Uh, uh, like my first job I, uh, with the Royal Winnipeg Ballet, I was really fortunate in that they lost three men mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the season before I joined them. So they were really a, in need of men. And so I, I was able to kind of fill that void. Um, so you were prepared to fill that void, right? Yes, yeah, that too. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's about taking advantage of those opportunities, opportunities yeah. yeah, and being prepared to, yeah. How competitive is it amongst uh, boys and men in ballet? Um, well, I think purely for numbers, it's a little less competitive than yeah. for the females. Uh, but certainly, uh, as ballet has modernized and come into the 21st century, mm -hmm. I think the uh, the expectation and the demand on, ma on male dancers mm -hmm. is much higher now. Um, and yeah, it's very, it's very competitive. Uh, and in the end, you've, uh, in a company, you've got an equal number of females and males. Um, and so at that point, the competition for the lead roles is just as fierce mm -hmm. and you have to work really hard if you want them. <laughs> and uh, why, uh, what do you like about that dynamic, dancing with a woman? I, I've always felt more comfortable when I'm sharing the stage with someone because uh, when you're dancing by yourself, it can feel a little bit mm -hmm. uh, lonely. Uh, but I, I, yeah, I love being out there on stage with someone and, and I love uh, that as the male role in, in ballet, you're, you're supporting mm -hmm. this female, you're, you're helping her uh, look even more glamorous and more amazing uh, because that's generally the role we take in partnering. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I've, I've always found a lot of joy in, in being that person. And you probably have great feet uh, because <laughs> <laughs> I hear a lot that for, for ballerinas, their yeah. feet take a lot of, uh, uh, I guess, pressure because they have to dance point. Yeah. Why don't you have to dance point? Um, I think it's uh, to do with what you know, the structure of point and, and the way females versus males look when, you know, in the dance world. Um, when you put a, ma a male on point, it looks awkward somehow, I think, because we're, we tend to be more bulky and, and our feet are less flexible, so the line just doesn't look quite right. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, and point came about, um, when a lot of the roles for females were very ethereal um, and spiritual and there was something about being elevated and being on point that that kind of made them very spiritual mm -hmm. and and beautiful in that sense um and it was yeah and then and then men end up doing so much jumping mm -hmm. and um which is, and wearing point shoes for that would be a nightmare, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a point, there's a, a picture of you up there, and mm. uh, you're now a principal at the National Ballet. Can you describe how you rose through the ranks there? Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit about what we just talked about, mm -hmm. about uh, uh, taking advantage of opportunities and being there uh, when they came about. I for quite a number of years. I don't want to interrupt you, but oh my <laughs> gosh, it's like you're doing the splits mm. in the air. I mean, that shows such strength. Mm. That's one of my favorite ballets that I've ever performed. Which uh, ballet is that? That's La Sophie. Mm -hmm. uh, we did that last season. Uh, what and, do you like about it? Um, I don't know. It's, it's a very certain style, actually. Mm -hmm. So it's Bourneville style. Um, dancing and uh, it's just characterized by the carriage of the arms and, and the way he uh, choreographed jumps for males and females and the certain ballon that you had to have. Um, 
and I just, I really, really enjoyed performing that. I mean, like the way that you're floating, it actually feels like, it, it looks like it's uh, photoshopped. Um, in what <laughs> ways do you make yourself unique and to stand out on stage? Oh, that's a difficult question. <laughs> um, I think everyone brings a certain something to their performance. Mm -hmm. uh, I, f I feel like I've always tried to stand out with uh, my partnering abilities and connecting to my partners. Um, and I've always felt like that's made me uh, special and uh, something that's, you know, catches people's eye, yeah. I mean, those pictures showed such strength. Like, mm. I mean, what is your workout routine like? I'm taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, like a lot of practice in the studio, a lot of, a lot of that. Um, I swim a lot, I really enjoy swimming. And, and I go to the gym, but most of that's for my upper body strength, all of the, the jumping and everything that just comes from, every day we take a ballet class before mm -hmm. we do any rehearsal mm -hmm. and that's to set you up for the day and there's jumps at the end of that class and it's just about um, approaching that class every day trying to improve, not just to be there, um, so. And I'm yeah. guessing you're burning a lot of calories. So at the end yeah. of the day, do you have like a big bowl of spaghetti? Um, <laughs> sometimes on a cheap day, yeah. Um, so complete the sentence. Um, if I wasn't a ballet dancer, I would be blank. Mm. Uh, I'd just say urban planner right now, just like on the other end of the spectrum. Why? Uh, it's, I mean, it's come about in the last few years since I've been living in Toronto mm -hmm. because it's such a, rapidly developing city and I love actually just walking the streets and seeing uh, what areas are changing and uh, just kind of watching that happen and seeing how much has changed even in, over the last four years that I've been here. Mm -hmm. What um, would you change? I would love to bring more green space downtown. I, I like looking at um, alleyways mm -hmm. and small areas that to, um, seem underutilized and imagining how I could turn that into a really cool space. Mm -hmm. um, I was in Tokyo uh, a few years ago and I loved that like under the railway tracks in that city there was there were restaurants that were like beautiful that you could walk into and get amazing sushi and so mm -hmm. it would be awesome to bring that to Toronto. Yeah. That's a great idea, and hopefully someone from the city of Toronto is watching. <laughs> yeah, it's my future job. <laughs> um, for young boys starting out, what mm. advice would you have for them? Uh, keep at it. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's really important to keep in mind that there's always going to be challenges, um, but also to remember that if it's it has to bring you joy, I think um, it's very easy when you get into the workforce mm -hmm. of, of ballet, which sounds bizarre, mm -hmm. um, it's easy for it to become a job and to forget that you love it. Mm -hmm. um, so always to, um, when you're in school and everything, to remember that it's that you're there because you love it and, and it brings you joy. And I know yeah. we talked a little earlier about you've never really had a, the opportunity to think about quitting, mm. but um, if someone wanted to quit, what would you say? Oh, it's a difficult one. <laughs> um, that again, I think they need to revisit uh, how they feel. Mm -hmm. um, if, if it's not bringing you joy anymore, then maybe that is an option for you. Um, but yeah, we've, I think I've talked to dancers in the company that went through struggles where they actually couldn't find um, the joy in dance anymore and then managed to, to kind of work on it and, and bring that back. Um, so not to give up. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's well, always about just kind of pushing on through. Well, Harrison, thank you so much mm. for being here and for bringing joy to so many people, so many lovers of ballet. Thanks very much. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.